So today's presentation will be about UHPC fiber orientation and volume assessment using uh, electrochemical impedance spectroscopy. And this work was done uh, with uh, my advisor, Dr. Zach Haber, who is one of the committee uh, members, and Dr. Chris Alexander. So for the outline, I'll start by introducing the concept of uh, the fiber orientation and volume assessment, and then give an overview about the previous research. Then um, I'll explain the EIS, or electrochemical impedance spectroscopy technique, and how it can be beneficial for use, and also how it can be implemented in uh, the finite element analysis. And uh, after that, I will explain some of the results of the numerical study, and then give some results or conclusions for that. So, introduction. The interest of researchers has increased over the past decade on how to assess uh, fiber orientation and volume. So, for example, many methods such as the tensile test had shown that UHPC performance is, has a huge dependence on fiber alignment. And uh, the factors that can affect the fiber alignment have to be taken into consideration, which I will discuss in the next slide. The factors impacting fiber orientation are cast and flow. For example, it was found that the uh, flow distance has to be optimized so that we can get a desirable fiber alignment. Also, there is the second factor of rheology or the mixture. It was found that viscosity and yield stress have uh, also uh, an important impact on this. Also, there is the size effect factor that is uh, impacting fiber orientation and uh, inclusions and boundary conditions and also casting devices. For the previous research. So here, um, in the previous research, um, there is one of the non-destructive technique that can evaluate fiber orientation is image analysis, and it works based on uh, specifying the size or cross-section of fiber, um, the fiber, and then uh, try to uh, choose an appropriate sampling size in voxels, and then uh, based on the image resolution and also the requirement, we will try to examine the fiber interface. Another technique to quantify uh, fiber orientation and volume is called the uh, CT scanning or computed tomography scanning. So it allows us to see what's happening inside the, the structure. And a study was conducted uh, by the University of Florida that shows um, like the examination of uh, a fiber reinforced specimen. Uh, as you can see in this uh, picture, so uh, this image shows the fiber orientation uh, analysis with the CT scanner and the uh, the fiber orientation was analyzed in three axes. So um, in the X axis and Y and Z, and uh, if you can see, so the red color shows that the fibers are perpendicular to the direction of the flow. Then the blue uh, color is showing that the fibers are randomly uh, oriented. And the uh, blue color shows like it's aligned with the flow and uh, the green color shows that they are around 45 degrees oriented. And following with the previous study, uh, they also used another technique called electromagnetic methods, and uh, this technique validated the previous results and showed that it has the capability to distinguish medium to severe variations of fiber orientation and volume. And the other non-destructive technique that I'll be discussing further in this presentation is the electrochemical impedance spectroscopy. And it is considered a powerful tool to use because it shows a high sensitivity to the microstructural change, also allowing the estimation of uh, several parameters such as the fiber volume fraction, also the interfacial properties between the fiber and the matrix. Now let's move to that section. So the basic principles of EIS revolves around the study of electrochemical properties or behavior of the electrochemical systems and also the measurement of the impedance as a function of frequency. 
Here, as you can see, if, for example, we have an input as a potential, so the potential will be uh, the sum of the city-state component plus the uh, magnitude of the potential, and uh, it will give you know the input response. And the output, in case is current density or potential, will be the sum of also the steady-state uh, component plus the magnitude of the oscillating uh, part, except that the output will have a phase lag. And then by getting the potential response and the current density, we will be able to calculate the impedance, which is the ratio of the magnitudes of the potential over the magnitude of the current density. And also the phase can be expressed as 2 pi times delta t over t. And here the impedance can be calculated from the phase and the magnitude. And since we're applying an AC uh, signal, so it will be expressed uh, in terms of imaginary part and a real part. And the impedance can be also displayed graphically in a Nyquist plot with uh, the imaginary component versus the real component. And there are numerous engineering applications of going from biomedical applications to sensor development. But I think the most important one for the audience who's here uh, is the study of the corrosion damage in uh, civil engineering structures, and especially in bridge post tensioning. So uh, my co-advisor, Dr. Alice, performed an AIS experiment and uh, on tendons, so where he was able to detect uh, corrosion damage and also calculate the corrosion rate. Also, uh, my co-advisor, Dr. Alex, with my advisor, Dr. Haber, a few months ago, they conducted a preliminary experimental research where they, they looked on how to use AIS and how it can be used or useful for UHPC. So what they did is creating a series of prismatic uh, beam samples that I have here on the screen and uh, trying to show results using different fiber volume fractions. And uh, the big takeaway here is to look on how the impedance response change with the change in our fiber volume. Also here, um, AIS challenges are numerous. For example, if you are trying to give uh, or pushing a signal into a black box, I mean, you have to understand what EIS is doing. So this is one of the challenges and also including um, like interpretation complexity. So we need advanced tools to get more information uh, explained. Also, uh, the frequency range and uh, like using too narrow frequency can just give us like, or we might miss information. And if we use like a big range of frequency, we might get like time consumed and also getting noise and disturbance. Also the data analysis is one of the AIS challenges. Like I mentioned, we need like advanced tools to, to do that correctly. So now in this section, I will move to finite element modeling. So here for the, um, Finite element modeling, um, a beam was chosen as our specimen, and the four-point electrode uh, were added on the top of the surface. And we tried to use Laplace um, uh, equations to solve for the oscillating potential and um, over a range of frequency ranging from 10 power minus 2 to 10 power 5 hertz. Also, um, the boundary conditions consider oscillating current density at the working electrode, and uh, also uh, by solving for the oscillating potential, we will be able to get the impedance and then uh, investigate the electrical behavior of the specimen. Here in this slide, you can see the fiber alignment configurations that were used, so we tried to investigate fibers along the X direction, Y, and Z. In this slide, also, um, we try to investigate different electrode configurations. 
So for the first one, we chose the electrodes to be spaced by five centimeters from the centers, while for the second one, we reduced the size into three centimeters. And here uh, you will be able to see a fiber configuration for 100 fibers. So we uh, try to change the fiber dispersion and investigate that. Also similar for 300 fibers and for 1,000 fibers. And for the meshing, um, the type of element of free tetrahedral was used with a, a fine element size to compute this uh, numerical analysis. So now for the results. So here, uh, this figure represents a Nyquist plot, and uh, it shows the response of the imaginary impedance versus the real impedance, also uh, ranging from low frequency to high frequency. And we are seeing that the loop keeps uh, decreasing once we increase the number of fibers, which means that uh, that is happening due to the high electrical conductivity of steel fibers leading to the decrease in its um, and its uh, impedance or resistance. And uh, this slide shows a comparison when it, with an existing research that they used the impedance, um, they used like uh, two uh, studies. So uh, they conducted a CT scan study along with electromagnetic uh, study to show that the total impedance tends to decrease as the steel fiber content increases. So here they chose a 0% specimen going to 2.5% of fiber content. And as you can see, the, uh, the loop increases as the fiber content decreases. Uh, following with the Nyquist plot, uh, this uh, compares the two electrode configurations and uh, we see, we see a shift along the x-axis on the real impedance part. And uh, so when the, the electrodes are becoming closer, the shift is going towards the right. And this uh, shows a change in the bulk effective resistance in the material. So for this slide, uh, you'll be able to see um, streamlines uh, presenting, like representing the current density flowing inside the fibers, uh, comparing the two electrode configurations. For this slide, um, it's we're still flowing with the Nyquist plot, but this one compares the fiber orientation along x, y, and z axis, and we see um, we don't see like much difference with Y and Z uh, compared to uh, the X axis. And this can uh, also validate that the, um, the UHPC specimen is more strength when the fibers are aligned uh, along the, uh, the flow direction and our X axis follows that rule. So we see like the loop is decreasing once uh, we go to the X axis. For this slide, it shows the streamlines uh, at different orientation on X, Y, and Z. And uh, it's the streamline for the current density flow. For our current work, uh, we're trying to create randomized fiber distribution using high performance computer to see how um, the EIS will work on this type of fiber arrangement, and also we're aiming to get larger physical experiments to validate our numerical study with experiments. And the summary and conclusions, so uh, we were able to investigate uh, and assess fiber configuration within UHPC using um, a multiphysics console, and uh, also the impedance response uh, showed that uh, there are differences in fiber volume and orientation, so basically these two components can affect the UHPC performance. Also, additional analysis is required to develop a methodology for blind evaluation. And uh, as I mentioned uh, just before, uh, we will need to uh, 
continue our work in order to investigate the 1% and 2% fiber volume uh, and also an experimental analysis so that we can validate our um, work.